If you like these videos and you want to see more of them, please consider becoming a Patreon. I save some of the coolest videos for the Patreon. On the screen I have a few of those. There's honestly too many to name though, I can't fit them all on the screen. So go and check that out. I'll put the link in the description and it helps me make more of the stuff that you're seeing here. So thank you very much and enjoy the video. What's going on guys? Welcome back to episode 2 where we build a battle royale game. Now, uh, I went out, I spent a little bit of money and I have a gift for all of you. I have an AK-47 model, and I'm going to show you how to actually import this now. So I'll leave the link in the description, you guys can just go and uh, download it, and we're going to import it. There's a few things we have to do, like set up the material and things like that. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys how to do all of that stuff. Now the first thing we need to do is import the model. Um, there's going to be a file called ak47.fbx. So what you want to do is take it and just drag it into the engine, like so. Drop it in there and you'll have this FPX import options thing. Now what I'm going to do, you have the uniform, uh, uniform, import uniform scale. Uh, unfortunately the model's like way too big, so just set that to 0 0.1 so it's the right size and hit import. And now you have your AK-47. Now, um, you guys can use this for any game project you want. Um, it's all yours. So yeah, there it is there. It is completely white though. And uh, the reason for that is because it does not have a material. Now we're going to set up a material. I don't want to dwell on materials and how they work all that much. Uh, but I'm just going to show you the basics of, you know, how to get that set up. So if we delete this Lambert 1, I'm going to set up a nice looking material for our AK. You'll have three files. Uh, you want to drag these in. Again, these will be in the description, so drag those in. And uh, once they're in we want to make a material out of these. Now we have three textures. We have the base color, which is just the color of the AK. We have the normal map. Now the normal map is used to make it look like our AK-47 has scratches and bumps and ridges on it. It's a really nice way to add a lot of detail to the AK without actually having to add a bunch of geometry to it. And then we have the roughness, metallic, and ambient occlusion maps, and they're all packed into this one material. Basically what we're gonna do is we're going to take the red, green, and blue channels, and each of those individually is actually a separate map. And uh, the maps are occlusion, roughness, and metallic. So what we're going to do, if you open this up and uncheck this box that says sRGB, uh, we need to do this if we're using the alpha channels individually as masks. So um, again, I don't even know why you need to do that, but just do that and then go ahead and save it. And now we'll create our material. So what you want to do, right click on the base color and create a material from it. And we're going to call this M underscore AK-47. Whenever you make a material, it's a good idea to put M underscore before it. And uh, that way, when people are looking through your assets, they instantly know that it's a material. So open up the material. And um, you can see this is what the material will look like. If you click on this little... If you click on this, and then uh, go to the bottom, you have this option preview mesh. If you click and search for AK-47 cannot be... Uh, what have I done? okay so if you click on this and then check the box that says used with skeletal mesh you can now view what the AK looks like now right now you'll notice the AK actually looks like very cheesy uh, it doesn't look very realistic the light doesn't shine on it in a realistic way so we need to set up what is called uh, PBR or physically based rendering so I'm going to take this texture sample, I'm going to copy and paste it in, and now I'm going to set up the normal map. Now the normal map, like I said, adds scratches and bumps and things to the AK, and it'll make it look a lot nicer. So check this out. If I plug this into the normal node, instantly the AK-47 gets a lot more detail. It's a little bit hard to see this, probably in the video, um, but the way that the lighting shines off it, there's like little ridges and scratches and things in it now. And it just looks a lot better. But it still looks pretty crappy. So how do we uh, bring it to the next level? Well, the next thing we're going to do is make another texture sample. So if you hold T on your keyboard and click, you can make a texture sample. And we're going to select the Occlusion Roughness Metallic. Now the green goes into Roughness, the blue goes into Metallic, and the red goes into Ambient Occlusion. At this point, this is pretty much the final piece of the puzzle. Now our AK-47 is looking very sexy. 
Uh, it looks very nice and it will be perfect for when we use it inside of our game. So you can go ahead and save that now. And uh, the last thing we need to do is just tell the AK-47 to use this material. So close this, open up the AK, go to where it says materials and then click on AK-47. And check it out, we have the AK, it's ready to be used in the game, all set up with PBR or physically based rendering. Now when you're making a big game, it's kind of boring, I, I don't find this to be a very glamorous, uh, interesting subject, but organization is really important, so uh, we're going to make some stuff just to get things organized. If you go into the content folder here, we're going to add a folder called meshes, and any meshes in our game are going to be put in here, and then we're going to make another folder and call this one materials, and this is going to hold all the materials for the game. So uh, if we go to, where did I put that? I dragged it into this third person uh, folder. So we're going to drag the AK and the physics asset and the skeleton into the meshes. And we're going to take all of the material stuff and put that in the materials folder. It's boring, it's not fun, but later on it's going to, it's going to make stuff more organized. So, yeah. Now there's also this thing here. If you open up the Epic Games Launcher and go to the Marketplace tab, you want to search for Animation Starter Pack. This has a bunch of animations for shooting and stuff like that, and it's completely free. And I'm also pretty sure you can use these in your packaged game as long as it is an Unreal Engine game. So if you download these, they're completely free. Add them to your project. It's really easy. And I'll see you guys once you've done that. Okay, so once you have the animations, you will have this uh, folder called Anim Starter Pack. Now this is important that you do this because uh, it will lead to a lot of confusion later on if you don't do this. You're going to have a folder called Mannequin. Go into that folder and delete the meshes. There'll be a folder called Mesh or something like that. Go ahead and delete that folder. We don't need that anymore because the Anim Starter Pack comes with its own mesh folder with the mannequins inside. And we're going to be using this one instead. So once you've deleted that folder, go to... Oh, and by the way, you'll get a lot of warnings when you try to delete it. Those are fine, just ignore those. Uh, and open up the third person character. Now because you've deleted the mesh that we were already using, there's going to be nothing here. So click on mesh, in the drop down select SK Mannequin, which is that new one that comes with the Anim Starter Pack. And now at this point what you can do is uh, where it says animation, you want to go to Anim Class and then uh, Hero TPP is the new Anim Blueprint. Later on we're going to make our own Anim Blueprint, but this one's perfect for now. And now you'll notice that our character is actually supposed to be holding a gun. Uh, so I know that was really annoying to have to do, but uh, we wouldn't have been able to make this game without these animations. So now that we have them, we can uh, continue on. So it's time to add some weapons to our game. How do we add weapons? Well, I, I did say this was for beginners, but in a way, um, I would recommend that you know some blueprints before continuing on because things will probably get a bit confusing if you don't. So in the content folder, I'm going to make a uh, folder called Blueprints. And inside Blueprints, we're going to put all of the important Blueprint stuff for our game. So open up your Blueprints folder and make a new Blueprint. And uh, now it's time to pick our parent class. Now, because the weapon is just something that can be placed or spawned in the world, we're just going to go with Actor. That's the perfect class for what we're trying to do. So we're going to call this uh, Weapon. I guess that's fine, Weapon. And then we're going to right click on weapon and create a child of it and call it weapon underscore AK-47. We're going to do this whenever we add a new class. So weapon is our parent class and whenever we want a, uh, a weapon, we can right click and create a child. So our first weapon is going to be this AK-47. Now all weapons are going to need a mesh, right? I mean, obviously. So we're going to open up the weapon class and add a component, select skeletal mesh, and we can call this gun mesh because it is the mesh for the gun. Go ahead and drag and drop that on there. And you want to select AK-47 as the gun's mesh. So we have AK-47 as the weapon's mesh, and if we open up the AK-47, you can see that also has it as well. In fact, what I want to do is, in the, the weapon class, if I go into gun mesh, I can clear that. Because this is just a parent class, it doesn't need to have anything set up in it. Uh, but the AK-47 does need to have the AK-47 selected, so go to gun mesh and select AK-47. Now we need to tackle the problem of how do we attach the weapon to the player's hands. I'm going to make a uh, event that will handle this, so if we type T and then a dot you can add a custom event. 
and I'm going to call this give to player. So what it's going to do is it's going to take a player and then give the weapon to the player. In networked games, Unreal Engine follows a pattern that is called server authoritative, meaning that the server should do all of the important stuff. Like, if I want to shoot a bullet, the server should actually be doing that. If I want to um, give money to a player, the server should be doing that. Uh, client authoritative is really bad because it gives players the ability to cheat. You can still cheat on server authoritative, but it's, it's a lot harder, especially if you've set it up properly. So giving a player to a weapon is a pretty gameplay important thing. I don't want people to be able to cheat. So I want the server to be able to do this. If I click on give to player and uh, select run on server and reliable, now it's going to run on server, which means the server's doing it, um, which is the, the, the person we can trust essentially. The reliable box will just mean that this always happens. If, it, if it's not reliable, it will only sometimes happen, or um, if there's a lot of network stuff going on, it will skip the call and not do it, etc. I hope I didn't scare like 50% of my audience off just then by rambling all that stuff. Uh, but anyways, we need an input. So we need an input that will say, uh, what player are we giving the gun to? So add a new parameter, and we're going to type in uh, third person character. Reference, and we're going to call this player. The first thing I want to do is uh, tell the weapon that it is now owned by this player. So what we're going to do is right click and type set owner. Ownership is a networking concept in Unreal. I would recommend uh, searching it. I'm not going to go into owners too much. Uh, but we're setting the owner to be the player. And then finally, I want to attach this thing, the gun mesh, I want to attach it to my player's hands. So how do I do that? Well, what we do is we take the gun mesh, so you can right click and get gun mesh. Uh, there it is there. And there is a function called attach to component, which will allow me to attach the gun mesh to the player. Now I have the player right here, so all I need to do is get the player's mesh by typing get mesh. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the gun mesh to the player's mesh. So drag out from gun and type in attach to component. So all we're, uh, all we're doing is taking this gun mesh, which is a component, and attaching it to the player's mesh, which is also a component. So we connect that up there and put that in there. It's asking for something called a socket name. The socket name is the socket that we want to attach to. Sockets are little um, things that we can put on our player to define where we want to attach the gun. I want to put the gun in my player's right hand. So I'm going to make a socket called weapon socket. We'll go ahead and type that in. And all of these rules are going to be snap to target so that the gun snaps into my hands and we can uncheck that box. Okay, so let me explain how to actually make a socket. If we go to anim starter pack, go to the mannequin mesh, and then go to the skeleton, there is a bone here, hand R. I'm going to right click and add a socket, and remember what we called it? I think it was weapon socket, so type weapon socket in. Okay, so we'll go back to... Actually, we'll click on this animation tab, uh, but first I'm going to right click on my socket and add a preview asset, AK-47. Okay, so we can uh, click on animation now. And so now you can actually see what it looks like in my player's hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bunch of rotation stuff. I'm just going to get these both up at the same time. Here we go. So what we're doing now is we're adjusting the weapon to be in the right location. This is really annoying to do, by the way. This will take you ages. Um, <laughs> I'm probably going to fast forward because it takes ages to get this lining up properly. Okay, so I've adjusted my AK. It's not in the perfect spot, but uh, it's good enough for now. Obviously, in a real game, you want to really take some care to make sure it sits in the right spot, but I don't really care all that much. I just want to get it set up, so I've moved it around, and that looks pretty good to me. So now when it attaches to the character, it'll actually sit in the right spot rather than just being in some weird location. So what I'm going to do now is actually tell the weapon to spawn. I need to spawn in the weapon and then um, call my new event that I made called give to player. So we'll go to third person BP, blueprints, open up my character, and uh, now it's time to do that. So I'm going to right click and make another custom event called spawn default weapon. 
So when the players spawn into the map, they will have a weapon by default. And you can turn this on later on. I oh, sorry, turn this off later on if you want. So spawn default weapon. Again, this is gameplay important. I'm going to tell it to happen on the server and we'll make that reliable. Cool, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to say when the game begins, spawn in our player's default weapon. So we're going to do spawn default weapon. And again, this happens on the server. So how do we uh, spawn the weapon in? Because we need to spawn the weapon and then um, attach it to the player's hand. So how do we spawn it in? We need to do that first. Well, what we do is we right click and then type spawn actor from class. Whoops. Spawn actor. There we go. Okay. So uh, first thing we need to do is tell it what gun to spawn in. If you type in AK-47, you should have the option there to spawn in AK-47, as you see. And you need to tell it where in the world we want to spawn, so the transform. You can just make a new transform and um, set everything to zero, because it's going to get attached to my player's hands anyway, so it actually doesn't matter where it gets spawned in. And the instigator, the person that spawned the weapon, is going to be self, aka the third person character. So at this point that's pretty good, however there's one thing that I do want to change and that is it's hard coded as AK-47. I want to make a variable so that I can change it whenever I want. So um, if I want to spawn in with a Glock or some other weapon that I made it's really easy to do so. So if you right click on class and promote to variable we can now type in default Oops, over here on the variables. I'm going to call this default weapon. What this means now is that um, I can just go ahead and click on my variable and change this, set it to whatever I want it to be, and then it's going to spawn that weapon. So it's just a cleaner way of doing things. And so once we've spawned in the weapon, all we need to do is call that function that we made, which is called give to player, or whatever I called it, totally forgot. Give to player. Uh, I actually screwed up. What we're going to do is copy this and actually paste it into the weapon class. It's not supposed to be an AK-47, it's supposed to be in weapon instead. So just copy that, paste it in there, and then delete this one. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that guys, it is supposed to be in weapon. So now we can give it to our player. So um, this is an actor right now, it doesn't know that it's a weapon, so we need to actually do a cast, so cast to weapon. And if it is a weapon, then we want to go ahead and give it to the player. There we go. Okay, I know that was a little bit complicated, but uh, that should work now. And we'll type in self as well. There we have it. That's pretty much all the setup we need. Let's try it out. If we hit play. There we go. All of our players have guns. Check it out, guys. Super sick. You cannot see the gun on the other screens, though, which is a little bit weird. What I'm going to try is go to the weapon. And uh, there's an option here, replicates. If we check this box that says replicates, I believe that's what we need to do. And if we hit play now, that should replicate the actor to other players. There you go. So you can now see on the other screens the AK-47 in my hands. So I know that might have been a little bit of a complicated video, maybe a bit harder than the first video, but um, I hope it helped. And I'll see you guys in the next video.